بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله الأسكياء وأصحابه الأتقياء أما بعد Yesterday we discussed Surah Ibrahim verse number 24 and 25 Today we move to the very next verse verse number 26 followed also by verse number 27 in yesterday's class, we discussed the example of a pure statement. And in verse number 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares with us an example of an impure statement. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ اشتثت مِنْ فَوْقِ الْأَرْضِ مَا لَهَا مِنْ قَرَارٍ That the example of an impure or a bad word is like that of a foul tree. It is uprooted from above the earth and it has no stability, no grounding at all. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes an impure statement. And in order to understand this, we need to reflect over the previous verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described a pure statement. He compared it to a pure tree and that pure tree had four characteristics. The ulama then completing off the example said, the most pure statement is a statement that connects a person with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ma'rifatu billah, knowing Allah, connecting with Allah. And the statement that connects a person to Allah, that allows a person to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the most pure statement uttered by a human being, which is, la ilaha illallah. There is no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now if we reverse this formula, what we see, is that the most impure statement will be any statement that creates jahala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that creates ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that tries to defy in a person their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that creates ambiguity or doubt in their heart regarding their creator, their Allah. Now in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this foul tree, this impure tree with three characteristics. Number one, he says regarding the tree that kashadaratin khabitha, that this tree in itself is foul, it's impure. Now the scholars have engaged in some discussion that which tree is this that the verse is talking about. Some say the verse is talking about uh, garlic because of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spoke of this garlic bi annaha shajaratun khabitha, that it is an impure and foul tree. Some scholars said it was leek, other scholars gave um, mentioned trees, which we call hamdal, which, can, which is sometimes translated in English as a bitter apple or bitter, bitter cucumber. It's a sort of plant that grows in that region. While other scholars, they said, innaha shajaratu shok. It's actually a tree that has thorns on it, some sort of a prick attached to it. This is the tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of in this verse. After narrating all of these opinions, Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi says, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ هَذَا التَّفْصِيلِ لَا حَاجَةَ إِلَيْهِ that all these opinions that the Mufassirun have given, they're good opinions, but they aren't absolutely necessary to understand this verse. Why is that? فَإِنَّ الشَّجَرَةَ قَدْ تَكُونُ خَبِيثَةً بِحَسْبِ الرَّائِحَ Sometimes a tree is disliked and it's foul because of the scent that it emits. There's a bad smell coming from the tree. وَقَدْ تَكُونُ بِحَسْبِ الطُّعْمِ Sometimes the tree may not have a bad scent, but if you take a fruit from there and you bite into it, what happens? It has a very bitter taste to it. Sometimes what happens is that it doesn't have a bad scent, the fruit doesn't taste bad, but when you look at the tree, it's not too appealing to the eye. It just looks, it looks off, it doesn't look too beautiful. And sometimes what happens is, Sometimes there are just harms that, relate, that are related to this tree. There could be many harms that are related to this tree. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of a tree that has a harm affiliated to it, that has some sort of harm associated to it. Now the second thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes uh, this tree with, He says, Ijtutha min fawq al Ijtutha means it is uprooted from above the ground. And compare this to the previous verse in yesterday's class, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Asluha thabit. The pure tree has roots that are grounded this one right here can easily be uprooted. You know, you go to a garden and there is a plant growing in your, back, in your backyard, maybe any plant, 
How hard is it for you to just yank it out of the ground? It's very easy. Just reach in, get a good grip and pull it and it's going to be out. اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار It has no grounding at all. And this is the third characteristic ما لها من قرار The scholars they say the third characteristic is actually a completion of the second one. So in reality, this tree has been described with two characteristics. It is foul to some degree in its nature. And the second thing, it has no grounding at all. And this is the reality of a statement that's impure. That it's a foul statement. Any statement that takes a person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it isn't good. You can smell it from far away and know that there is some foulness to the statement. And when that, person, when that statement gets closer to you, and if you allow that statement into your life, what you'll notice is that it causes corruption in your heart. It brings unsettledness in you. You don't feel good about it anymore. And then it brings so much harm to you in the world. And ultimately, like a person who eats a rotten fruit, someone who eats a rotten fruit, first of all, you have to have you know, corrupted taste buds and a corrupted mind to enjoy a fruit that you know that is rotten while there are pure, fr pure fruits sitting there. So there are pure statements. There's a pure opportunity for you to connect with Allah. Yet you abandon that and you go to this rotten fruit and you pick it up and eat it. That requires a sort of twistedness in and of itself. But when you do eat that fruit, it doesn't stop there. It will harm you when it, once it enters into you. And it, it will harm you as it exits you. And therefore, this impure statement will have harm with you wherever it goes, throughout your life, as long as you are connected to that impure statement. And ultimately, if a person is led to kufr by this impure statement, disbelief, then the harms, as we know, are many in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار. These impure statements have no grounding at all. Because the truth is, any statement of kufr that is made has no real grounding. Every statement of kufr that's been made against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they may sound appealing, they may sound very pleasing, they may sound intelligent. But ultimately, if a person sits, at, sits with them and looks at them and really reflects over them, not only with their intellect, but also with their heart, also comparing it to everything they observe in the world, there is no way in the world you can come to a conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't exist. That jahala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not real. Ma laha min qarar. It has no basis at all. So with this verse, we close off and we remind ourselves that we should always connect ourselves with pure statements. Therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encourages us. People ask, why are we told to say subhanallah a hundred times or Allahu Akbar a hundred times? Why are we told to say astaghfirullah a hundred times? You know, I'm just... Why, do we, why are we told in the Qur'an, أُذْكُرُ اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا Remember Allah abundantly. Because these statements that we, are told to set abund that we are told to say abundantly are all pure statements. And the more we associate ourselves with these statements, the more we connect ourselves with these statements, the more we will find from the fruits of these statements. And unfortunately, when a person turns away from these pure statements, when a person turns away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately shaitan finds an opportunity to inject into this person's heart impure statements. Allah azza wa jal says in the Quran, إِسْتَحْوَذَ عَلَيْهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّذْ لَهُ الشَّيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ That the moment a person stops engaging with these pure statements of, of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shaitan finds his opportunity and he attacks right away. Build a habit of being connected with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always surround yourself with people who are pure in their thoughts, pure in their statement, pure, pure in their statements, pure in their beliefs. You will find peace with these statements in the world, and without doubt you will find great success with these statements in the hereafter. Don't be deluded by false statements. And I know this may sound very wishy-washy and may sound like I'm making empty claims standing here, but I only have a few minutes to speak. Otherwise, I'd be more than willing to engage with you on false statements that are made against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim scholars have never shied away whenever anyone made a false attribution to Allah to address those issues, to tackle them head on. There are so many Muslim scholars. Imam, Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali rahimahullah, he is titled, he is known in Islam as Hujjatul Islam. They call him Hujjatul Islam, the clear proof of Islam. And why? Because he debated with people who made false claims against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his entire life. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, before becoming a faqih, before dedicating his life to Islamic law, first spent the first half of his life dealing with atheists, dealing with people who had corrupted belief. Therefore, he is known as one of the first people in Islamic history to write a book on Islamic creed. Because he was engaging with these people. 
Muslim scholars always challenge them. And as they challenge them in the past, they continue to challenge these false thoughts until today. For those of you that feel that, you know, false statements and false attributes uh, associated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that God doesn't exist and this is, you know, this is the way we should be going and atheism is the way and, uh, you know, ilhad is the way. If these are things that are appealing to you, I seriously encourage you to open your mind, open your heart and really study with proper scholarship. I'm not talking about online searching, Google searching. If that's the standard of your research, good luck on your college degree. Good luck with your life. Because that sort of research is not research. This is child's play. But if you're going to talk about something while making an attribution to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to be willing to do the job right. Which means you need to take on the task of studying properly. Addressing these issues carefully and with a proper methodology. Therefore, you'll be able to come to a pure, wholesome, holistic understanding of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. This is at the center of our life, the purpose of our existence, getting to know Allah, building a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to understand and appreciate His ma'rifah. May Allah bless us with His irfan. And may He save us from jahala. May He save us from any poisonous arrows of shaitan. May He save us from the whispers of shaitan. May He save us from the insan who take the form of the shaitan and whisper doubts into our heart. May He fortify our hearts with iman, allow us to live with iman and die with iman. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.